All right, guys, as you can see here, we've got a Razor XP900. I'm going to do a little video on how to take the clutches off. First, we'll need an impact driver. You don't have to use this. You can use just a regular wrench with a 3 8 socket. I have a half inch impact, an 18 millimeter and a 22 millimeter socket. The 18 millimeter to get the shock off. The 19 millimeter wrench will get the back side of the nut off there on the shock. Also we have a clutch puller. You're going to need the clutch puller to get the stock primary off. I sell clutch pullers if you need them. There is a little Teflon tape and some uh, cutting fluid. I'll show you why we need that in a minute. You'll also need a floor jack because in order to get the clutch housing and the clutch off of this next P900, you will need to take the rear shock off. Here under the driver's side uh, in front of uh, the shock where the frame is, there's a frame horn that we can jack up on. There's a point there where we use to jack. You want to jack the machine up just to where the rear tire is almost off the ground to where it unloads the rear shock. What you'll do is you'll take the rear, the bottom bolt out of this rear shock and you want to lift up on the jack where it just does release the tension on the shock where you can pull the bottom bolt out. And as soon as the rear tire gets off the ground, the shock, the bolt usually pops right out. Once you get there, jack up on the machine another pump or two where you can get your rear shock out of the way. I always like to pull the rear shock up and jam it behind one of the lugs of the tire. That gets it the best out of the way. Now I have two wobble extensions here and a 3 8 socket to try and pull these nuts off of your belt housing. Uh, you can do it with just a normal wrench. So this way is just a little faster. And once you get all your bolts out, your housing will come straight outward. And usually you may have to play with a shock to get this housing out and around. Sometimes we have to push the shock forward, and there we go. And now you're looking at your factory primary and secondary. Here's your primary, here's your secondary clutch. Polaris makes a tool to spread this secondary open. It looks like a, a hook tool on the end of, of a pry bar, but really you can use a pry bar as long as you're gentle and you don't go beating stuff up. This one's obviously been done before, as you can see the, the nick in there. If you'll stick a pry bar in there, you just want to push down on that roller. And then once you do that, the belt will fall down in the secondary, holding the, the secondary open. You can get you another good grab and push this guy open a little further and get your belt over the top of the secondary and your belt comes out just like that now if you'll notice the words Polaris are written on the belt and you want to keep the writing facing towards you when you put this belt on that's the way it comes off that's the way we like to leave it now in order to get this primary off we'll need to try and jam the shock up on the lug of the rear tire to hold it up out of the way I'm going to take our half inch impact. It's a 21 millimeter socket. I want to loosen this guy up. This is an incredibly long bolt. If you've never seen one before, it's just a 14 millimeter bolt. Now, main reason I asked you to put a jack under the middle of this machine on this driver's side is so that we can jack this machine up at an angle. After we get the primary bolt out, I jack these machines up on the side, just tilt them over on the side like this, because in order to get the primary off, we have to do a little trick. Now, obviously we use a clutch puller, and although we have a clutch puller, it would normally pop that clutch right out. But for some reason, the last few of these machines I've done, I have not been able to get them loose with just the clutch puller. So what I do is we take Teflon tape and wrap on this clutch puller, what you want to do is you want this clutch puller to have the Teflon tape on it so it will seal up. What we're going to do is we're going to use the hydraulic method to pop that primary clutch off. I'm going to use some cutting fluid that we put in our CNC machines. I've got it in a squirt bottle. You can use water, you can use oil, you can use grease. I use this cutting fluid because it's uh, water based, it cleans up real easily and it's still thick enough to compress. 
you just want to feel the end of that clutch up and this will not hurt the clutch at all and again you can take water from a water bottle i'm sure you could use a coca-cola if that's all you had just something to compress now with the teflon tape on the threads you can put this guy on here with a 22 millimeter socket you thread your clutch puller in and it threads into the clutch. It displaces the water that's in there that it cannot take. But once you turn the clutch puller in with your impact, it will compress the water and push the clutch off the shaft. And that's how it's done. That's how we get the primary clutch off. I've never had one fail. I wouldn't be scared of the bang that it makes. It's nothing but the hydraulic method uh, pushing the two, the, the tapered crankshaft and the clutch apart. Now we will need to pull the secondary clutch out of this machine as well because of the work that I have to do requires that I have to have the secondary clutch as well. So we take our 15 millimeter and it also just the same as the primary is a normal lefty loosey bolt. It is a short bolt pops right out the secondary clutch then pulls off. Now once you get your secondary clutch off it will look just like this. We will take it and you'll box it up and you'll ship this secondary clutch to me.